I'm, I'm the last presenter here uh, on the program, through each program, on, on uh, setting up projects to mitigate climate change in developing countries. Uh, and when we also did this program last year, we normally have this part, the financing part, uh, at the end. Uh, some would feel a bit like a discouragement because this is say, the reality check for all the good ideas that people have and nice things that could be done. But the main issue is, can we provide financing? Is it possible to attract funding for these activities? And what we're doing for these two days, what we're still uh, trying to finalize today, is to find ways for these people to circumvent the obstacles that might be in terms of financing of, of the activities. We do that with uh, or by engaging uh, financial institutions, have them present uh, what the requirements are for their participation, uh, what they expect from project developers when they approach them to obtain financing. Um, and hopefully we are also able to provide a bit of uh, input and insights on how to mitigate different risks uh, that may be hindering the access to funds. So the, the, the international negotiations on a future climate regime are not really moving ahead in the pace that we would like to, uh, to, like to see. Um, and the mechanism in particular that we're looking at, the clean development mechanism, uh, by many is now regarded as being faded out, fading out, and giving way for other market mechanisms, maybe, or maybe other mechanisms that are not as market based as CDM has been. Uh, it is a fact, though, that for many of these countries participating here, the least developed countries and developers from, from these countries, they will still have the clean development mechanism operational for at least the next five, six, seven, eight years in their countries simply because the EU has decided that they are going to accept emissions reduction uh, from, from these countries. So we, we assume that we will continue to work with the CDM, uh, with these countries, for the next two years. Fellowship. And fellowship, what brings it together for fellowship? Only God. Not, not uh, about coming to make someone better. Your ability to be able to give your tithe and your offering should be out of the love for God, not for the man who is standing before the minister. Uh, I would, if such a situation does exist, I would, uh, I would, I would say it's manipulation. Because, because anything, any, no, 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 can I think also finish? Let's anything that, 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 what you wanted to say was that the pastors can influence the church members to peer and to be environmentally conscious. That is all they wanted to say. Maybe he was dragging it. We are. Let's let's let's. I think that is what he meant. Yeah. And it happens. It happens. Let's get back to the main thing. Use faith-based organizations, not only churches, because they have bodies like Mother's Union, which sort of helped enhance appreciation of the technology. So if you get such people to appreciate that it does add value, it helps when someone who has credibility tells you, oh no, you know, use this. It adds value. So that's how. We use we use them. The community. So you use the church. Okay. You know, basically, whether church or religious body or the, the, the bottom line here is the association. In most settings, either financial setting or commercial setting or communal setting, whatever. The bottom line is that the association as a cooperative objective. And it serves as a peer pressure as well as peer review on one another. This has been demonstrated in agricultural lending that we've done in the back in the past. We are more comfortable to lend to a member of association or cooperative simply because the tendency to default is very, very low. Because as you are spending, the community will watch you if you are becoming more extravagant because they know one egg can spoil a lot. If it's, if it defaults in repayment, then between the whole community, the whole association or cooperative will be affected. In the same sense, we see when um, the, like the example Stella is giving, 
which will, if there should be any issue, okay, and the association is there to bring the corrective measure on the particular person that will be defaulting in the repayment of the, uh, the item that has been distributed. I think that fits in what you're saying. But for us, we prefer for households that the cost is low enough for a one-time payment. Because time has shown that where you for a household, especially a rural household, if they're urban, fair enough, but many rural households are not don't have commercialized you know, production. They live off what they do. So if you can give them something they can save and pay off one, so that maybe they register up for it and when they finish payment is when you give it. Because if you give it before they finish, then they will honestly tell you they do not have money and you can take it if you want. So that's what we need, at least for the rural households. As long as it's a, you can do good with a one-time payment, that's good enough. So association is, if you take it back to risk terms, association as a concept is a risk mitigation yeah. instrument. Yes. Association. Oh no, of course. That's what that's why I mentioned one of the mitigation was use of civil societies mm -hmm. and faith based organizations. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But then now associated that's what then I said local politicians. Because the local politician is you have the district, the county, the sub county and the village. So if you use the village councillors they have more influence because they know the people more than maybe the sub-county councillor. So that's what we use and that usually works out fairly well for us. But it only works if you have a valid argument, if that's something will make economic sense to the household. So. Well, that's why yes. the returns on investment on, on the cook stoves, in terms of CBRs, mm -hmm. uh, the value of the CBRs Pay for the bookstore. Fully. We don't want to give it to them. Why is that? Value addition. They, uh, people tend to value um, things that they've paid for. Like when we, you know, if. if you could check their own bookstore. You could what? Check their own bookstore. I'm going to give you a new one for free. I just need your own bookstore. In the rural areas, that would be you taking three stones away. Yeah. <laughs> They won't buy it, I mean, my three stones. But that's why, because they the oven, the oven, yes, you can take the, or oven of town, can, you can take the other stone, yes. But the largest population is the rural population. And many times when people provide food stoves, they tend to miss out on them, which is why we really want to come into Africa and make sure everyone is covered in terms of appreciating the technology and using it. Even in terms of getting the sellers to go to markets where they would previously not have gone because they're not as viable. So by using the, the viable or by changing the mindset, then you open up what would potentially not have been a marketable area just so everyone can benefit and you have a sort of synchronized uh, improvement in energy efficiency. What I mean to say is that there should be funding enough in the system mm -hmm. to make the providers, when your main risk here, maybe the, the cook stove suppliers are not willing to deliver the cook stove at the price you want to, to have them adopted. Yeah. Well, in theory, at least, there's plenty of financing available for them to reduce the price even to zero. If you can guarantee them the income, not from the selling of the bookstore, but from the emissions reduction. So your your risk mitigation there will be linked to guaranteeing the income of the stove suppliers. Is it in the way of uh, subsidies, adding subsidies to the producers? It's sort of providing very finance. What is it? What is it you're going to, to, to provide here? You're going to provide the registration of the POA. If you can register the POA and the CPA and make sure that you, you have the income. 
And then you're there. You are all wrong. Okay, so now, you're saying once it's registered, yeah. right? Then they sort of have a guarantee, but the stove has to be in use, right? The stove has to be in use. Which is where it makes sense for us because we will have the. Remember when you asked why why does the local government need the percentage of the CERs? Mm -hmm. Is to ensure that on ground use of the stoves that the community, you know, some communities can get the stoves, but using it is a different thing. Mm -hmm. So sort of maintain that sensitization and mobilization that they actually do use them. Yes. So that's for the monitoring part of our CBA. My name is Sajib Nayak. I come from Zambia. Uh, we are here for the three weeks course on green energy and carbon market being sponsored by the Danish Agency for International Development, Danita. And the course is being coordinated with the, the United Nations Environmental Program and the consultancy firm NIDAS. And we have been uh, attending coursework, we have been visiting various uh, energy efficient plants, and we'll be leaving on Saturday. And when we go back, we are supposed to implement a project, energy efficient project in our own countries, our own work environment. Thank you. Yes, I'm Munga from Kenya. Just like my colleague have said, we came to learn about green energy and we have had a fantastic time, a lot of learning and experience sharing. We have learned quite a lot in terms of green energy seeing the development that uh, Denmark has made in terms of green growth. This will be replicated and we will be doing several projects back at home and we hope that our countries will also grow following the green growth path. We have learned about the carbon finance and how it can be used to raise income that is necessary and important for the rural communities to, to, to develop. So that's a very proud field and we know that when we go back we shall have new strength and force to work for green growth and rural development. I am Seif Mungume from Uganda and as uh, um, other people have mentioned we are part of the the NIDA funded um, course in green energy and carbon markets. Among this, the main thing we have learned, we've learned about the green development mechanism and how um, countries from um, developing countries can implement projects that have uh, this sustainable development aspects but also reduce the overall greenhouse gas emissions and how they can uh, benefit from the clean uh, development mechanism to raise um, um, carbon finance that can make the projects more financially viable or generate revenue that can be used to be re reinvested in other projects <coughs> in other countries. We have also learned about the, the progress that has been made in the clean development mechanism and how the, the, the program will evolve uh, post 2012 after the, the first commitment period of the Chetra Protocol has, when it ends. Um, so we have learned in this course that uh, projects from developing countries will continue to be incorporated in the CDM and to trade on the emission trading scheme. So that gives us more impact, uh, impetus to, to continue with our work in CDM and to know that uh, these projects will continue to benefit from the CDM past the 2012. Thank you. Hi, my name is Billy. I'm from Zambia. And I just want to say thank you very much to Danida for offering us an opportunity to come together, bring together a diverse group of people that uh, got different experience and knowledge from different sectors. I've come to know some engineers from different places of the world. Uh, the 
Seth from Uganda is an engineer and Pushka from Nepal and uh, just uh, the amazing knowledge that these people uh, have been able to share with me has really been uh, has really impacted my life but not only that but I just also want to say thank you in the sense that uh, Danid has facilitated this capacity building uh, in our lives which will be able to take uh, wherever we're going to go um, um, my, my overall um, take from this course is a satisfaction that it's <coughs> made all my um, my expectations. I've enjoyed visiting um, sites that are putting in place technologies that uh, we just read about in, in textbooks, but we're able to physically see them in operation and uh, challenged to think outside the box and go and apply the technology that we've seen uh, happening here. And also I'd like to urge Denida that in future, um, they, if they could consider uh, not only ending the support after six months, but create a situation where there's continuity until um, there's completion of that knowledge and technological transfer. Thank you. Thank you, Junior Chalki from Zimbabwe, uh, stay in South Africa now. Um, I've enjoyed my stay at Denida. Um, the courses have been very enlightening. Uh, we've learned a lot, especially on the business side aspect. We hope we will be able to implement them when we go back to our countries. Um, on the social side, uh, the Fellowship Centre offered a wide range of activities, table tennis, um, pool, um, movie night, as well as making cakes. Rich cultural diversity and we love to stay here. Thanks a lot. I'm from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Uh, my company sponsor from Danida. Okay, so I uh, take part in this class because I want to collect knowledge. And after come back from Vietnam, I want to uh, talk with people that how to save money from energy, green energy, and how to get money from CDM. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> Hello, I am Kushkar Manander from Nepal. I am also here uh, to pursue my training uh, funded by Danida and organized by UNEP Rizzo and Miras. Uh, back home in Nepal, like, I was involved in uh, dif different kind of rural energy technologies, but like I, I, don't, I have less knowledge about using this carbon financing in rural te uh, technologies that can uh, suit for the poor. But after I came here, I learned about the CDM projects and financing, uh, carbon financing projects. I hope uh, I will be able to use, internalize this knowledge, uh, learnings when I back to my home. And I have uh, developed a business idea now uh, to, uh, to link this CDM projects with improved cookie stops in my country. Hopefully I will be able to materialize it when I back to home. Thank you. Hello, my name is Benjamin. I come from Kenya. Um, I need to, to, to say a few things about how the course was structured. It was a three weeks course and it was um, the methodology of instruction was classroom, classrooms. So I guess the lecturers from UNF RISO and NERAS and other people from the industry. We were also involved in going to the field for, to, to look at case studies of successful or emerging and um, rural energy technologies which are low impact and uh, it was going to be very useful for us to, to, to replicate it when we go back to our countries. Something also very, spe very special about this particular course was the preparation of a, a practical business plan for projects that we are going to implement when we get back to our countries and uh, there has been mentorship from, from, uh, from, from some of the instructors on how we can uh, develop better business plans and today we are learning about the idea of financial risk. Hello, my name is Martha from Uganda. Uh, it's been really great to be here, having a mix of uh, people from nine or so different countries. Uh, I've, been, I've benefited a lot, learning a lot from the course, not just from the facilitators, but from participants themselves. It has been very enriching. Um, I've enjoyed the field studies as well because I'm currently working in the carbon consultant, consulting firm and doing a number of CDM product development and uh, 
it was good to go out and see the green technologies out there for biogas incineration and landfill gas recovery. And so that I can have a, an appreciation of how CRs are actually generated and having a better understanding of the technologies. I think I'm very lucky to uh, attend this course because it's really interesting and it's um, very useful for me. Actually, I'm a member of a, a flower orchid association in Vietnam. So what I learned now, we become the community uh, benefit when I'm back to Vietnam. And particularly green energy and uh, carbon marketing, very new aspect in Vietnam. So what I learned now is a little bit difficult for me, but it's manageable. I've learned that taking back home, we need to talk to our politicians and then convince them on how to manage our waste better. And it's important to uh, succeed right from the household level. If you can get people to separate the rubbish and then know that actually waste can be a resource, we can see how we can generate biogas from that and then use it to produce electricity, which is very much like in Uganda at the moment, there's almost load shedding every day, which is quite upset given how much resource we have and could have used to produce electricity. Um, yeah, I think that's the main main point I'll take home regarding like, you know, there's nothing like waste, it's only a resource it can be used for something. <coughs> Back home in Zambia, we noted that we don't process the municipal waste. What we do is that we go and dump it in a nice little place. Truckloads of dumps are being filled in and we don't reprocess. And that place is never being reused. And when I come to Copenhagen, I realize that there's a large potential for producing biogas or natural gas from the, from the municipal waste and that could be quite useful for generating energy and this would save environment and the place can be reused so that's a great learning for me thank you so in the developing countries including my own country nepal the use of these forest resources is very unsustainable they are using it uh, these forest resources mainly for cooking purpose, uh, aging purpose, boiling water purpose, but they are using very inefficient technologies due to which like uh, the fire consumption is very high and indoor pollution is also there which cause very serious health uh, problems like uh, respiratory problems uh, and uh, other, other eye uh, problems related to eye uh, such things. And like, uh, and this is the main, uh, like, a motivation for me to go choose this business plan to go to adapt to encourage lo lo our local people to adapt improve cooking stoves by use. I believe that by use of these technologies, the, we will be able to introduce higher efficient uh, stoves so that the fuel load consumption will be lower and at the same time the indoor air pollution can be also ele elevated. And furthermore, this has benefit like due to lower firewood consumption, the tragedy of the Oman will be also reduced. So it will have like a, a holistic benefit. Thank you. I've also learned about the uh, importance of private and public partnership, especially in provision of energy. This goes a long way in enhancing and building confidence in the private sector. I've seen that working very well here by the government give support to private individuals to set up plants to produce energy. I've also seen the need to integrate small small energy sources into the main grid. Like we can have we, we decentralize our systems. Instead of having big systems, we can have so many small production centers or units, all of them integrated into the main grid. And that goes a long way in creating investment opportunities for many people who would put up small skills and then serve the majority who are unserved. Thank you. When I go back to, to my country, Kenya, I'm, I'm really going to use the, the information or the, the skills that I've gained from this course. Um, I'm associated with uh, an energy cook stoves project in Kenya that I'm developing for a, a local community. 
and it, that will go all the way up to carbon trading. So I'll be looking for carbon uh, carbon offsetters to, to get that done. And uh, the skills that I've gained from here are really going to be very useful. Um, again, I'm also associated with uh, a methane project uh, whereby we are packaging biogas and uh, biogas uh, for, for household consumption. So I think that's going to be quite exciting when I take my skills that I learned from here so to, to those kind of. But then this, this course has also been an eye opener for me. I've come to learn that waste is not always waste. Waste is not always wasteful. Waste must not always be wasting. And uh, there are so many ways in which you can create a lot of resources out of waste. And those, those are going to be the, my eye openers and things that I'm going to do to unlock the entrepreneurial opportunities for various people who are, who are in my country and are struggling on what to do with their resources. Thank you. See you. In my case, I'm working on a business plan for methane capture and utilization for waste water treatment. So basically, um, my business plan will um, enable um, us in Uganda to, to construct a wastewater treatment plant for municipal wastewater from the, our capital city, Uganda, and we'll make it in such a way that we incorporate a technology, um, an aerobic sludge digesters, to digest the sludge and then the generate methane, which will go into the atmosphere and contribute to greenhouse gases. In this case, it will be used to produce electricity and heat that will be used for the internal plant uh, operations. So in that way, uh, it will be developed as a CDM project, uh, generate about 500 kilowatts of electricity and slightly more than um, 600 kilowatts of heat, and that will be used for the internal electricity consumption, so it will make the plant energy energy independent and also reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Also, it will be developed as a CDM project and the emission reductions from from uh, from that project will be um, sold on the emission emissions trading market, the global emissions trading market. Yeah, so in that way, it will contribute to greener and sustainable urban water uh, management in my city, in Kampala, Uganda. Yeah, I work for a government agency, the National Water and Storage Corporation, and it is keen um, on uh, working on this project, and that's why I was uh, sent to this course. And therefore, I hope, I hope and uh, I plan to work directly to ensure that my business plan is implemented. I think that if you take your time with some of the changes, that you can attain them. It's about being practical about it and taking all the steps. Yes, so to get people to be more environmentally aware. Um, the practical thing is my business plan. I'm working with the BB solar uh, system because the big problem in my country is we don't have enough Great electricity, so in the sunny season we have a power cut almost every year, almost three days a week. It's a big problem. Uh, it worries our government, worries uh, investors, worries business. So to uh, overcome this, uh, I think the best um, solution is to uh, apply the PV system. So we can uh, pick up for the sh shortage of power, and of course, really um, uh, practical, like they can help us how to um, analyze the SWOT, analyze uh, financing ability, uh, analyze financing opportunity, and the objects of the business um, are the. We fight at the end. So I think I enjoy the course a lot. I hope also that the discussion with, with, with the financiers coming here would, would, would be a chance for you to get extra input for your for your financial for your business.